calculus optimization problem number two. A rectangle has its base on the x-axis and its two upper corners on the parabola y equals 12 minus x squared. What is the largest possible area of the rectangle? And like I do in most problems I can is draw a picture of the situation. So we have this this uh, parabola opening down were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we have a y-intercept of 12. And we have a downward opening parabola. We have negative x squared instead of positive x squared. And so the downward opening parabola is going to look something like this. And the, uh, the base of the rectangle is going to be along the x-axis and so we're going to have a rectangle here on uh, a width and this distance here on this side is going to be x and negative x over here and so that will be our width will be the absolute value of x plus negative x which will be 2x and the height of this optimal rectangle or length sometimes it's called it's going to come up here and go down like this and so our height of this rectangle is going to be uh, f of x so the input of x and then uh, that value according to our function is going to be 12 minus x squared so we have width equals 2x and the height or sometimes we could say length would be 12 minus x squared. So to find the area of this rectangle we would get uh, area equals length times or width times height and so we'll have 2x for the width times quantity 12 minus x squared. You realize that I placed the 12 minus x squared in parentheses because we have to multiply the entirety of the height by, it, by the width. And so using the distributive property of algebra, we have the area is going to be equal to 24x times 2 times negative 2x times x squared is going to be minus 2x cubed. Now, we're going to uh, try to find the maximum area of this rectangle, and to do so, um, we're going to look for a horizontal tangent line. So if we have a, uh, a curve like this, the horizontal tangent line is going to be equal to zero at the height of this area of this area function. It looks like a cubic function, but it's essentially an area. And so to find that, we're going to take a prime and take the derivative. Well, the first derivative of 24x will be using the power rule 24. And for the second term here, we're going to multiply 3 times by the negative 2. So we'll have negative 6. x to the 3 minus 1 is 2. And the horizontal tangent line is going to be, we'll have a horizontal tangent line where the first derivative is equal to 0, set e, a 0 equal to 24 minus 6x squared. And so now we'll, we'll solve this equation by factoring. And so 0 equals, we have a common factor, it looks like, of 6 between these two. So 6 times what equals 24? Will that be 4? And 6 times what equals negative 6x squared? Well, that's going to be just negative x squared. So we'll divide both sides of the equation by 6. And so we have 0 is equal to 4, quantity 4 minus x squared. And using the difference of squares factoring method, we'll have set 0 is equal to the square root of 4, which is 2, plus minus square root of x squared, which is x and x. So we have 2 plus x is equal to 0, and 2 minus x is equal to 0. And so solving each of these equations, we will have x equals negative 2, and we'll have x equals 2.
And we can see that that will get the same value because of symmetry, uh, either using an input of x or negative x, or, or 2 or negative 2 for this function. And so what we have is since 2 is our width, we will say our width is 2x, which will be 2 times 2, which will equal 4. And our height is going to be 12 minus x squared, which is, which is 12 minus 2 squared, which equals uh, 12 minus 4, which equals 8. And so therefore, the height, the, the area of this rectangle, is going to be equals width times height, which equals uh, 4 times 8, which equals 32 uh, square units width. So this, this will be our answer, and we can see that this probably would make sense given our drawing. Thank you.